You're welcome back. This is News File. It's the most authoritative news analysis platform. And here on News File, we put Ghana first. Uh, Sami Jamfi is um, off and uh, replaced by James Agaga. He's a uh, member of parliament, Bosa South. No. Uh, North, yeah. Um, I've been dealing with a, f a park and others <laughs> too here. And so let me read uh, some of your messages now. Eja Adam says, what <coughs> NDC should be doing is providing us alternatives to NAPCO, free SHS, 1D, 1F, and not a pedantic, pedantic issues. Well, they are pedantic for you. Ibrahim Kofa in Tamale says that issues of family and friends <coughs> was first introduced into our socio-political discussion by Honorable Aban Bagwin as criticism of John Mahama with respect to the latter's relationship with Randy Abbey. Kwesi uh, Akufu in Subing in Kumasi says that even in opposition, former President Mahama has appointed his cousin <laughs> Joyce Baba Mokhtari as his spokesperson who is being paid from the resources <laughs> of the ordinary Ghanaian. Fuseini Atta <coughs> says that I expected the NDC to be pointing at a specific law that president, the president has violated in the appointment of his ministers instead of uh, talking about the able men and women who are helping the president to fulfill his campaign uh, promises. Um, and Okay, and, and in their press conference, okay, nobody has actually mentioned this issue here, but it came up in the press conference by Nana uh, Boachi, you know, referencing the president's, uh, former president's brother and suggesting that 80% of the bauxite of this country was handed to him for free. And um, I received, um, uh, you know, documentation as ordered by the Minerals Commission vindicating Ibrahim Mahama as having gone through due process to acquire uh, the license that some questioned and the fact that Exton um, QB uh, has a comprehensive plan to build a bauxite industry that will create 20,000 direct jobs and countless indirect jobs. So those claims should be uh, jettisoned. All right. Um, just a couple here, and then we will proceed. Now, Kojo says that since when was nepotism about numbers? If the president appoints only one member of his family into a government position, that accords his family the ability to wield state power, and that is nepotism. If we use the measure of whether the appointee is best qualified or whether they are delivering in the office, it becomes a subjective thing. The appointing party will always argue that his appointee is best qualified when and delivering on the expectations. Okay, so, um, right. So, um, okay, I think I pointed out this already about the fact that the question of Gabby's wife that came up. So it's a rejoinder that uh, <coughs> has already been taken care of, that um, she has many years standing at the law, uh, rather than uh, Kukufu. Kukufu, I said, was about four years. I'm told it's about rather two years or so. And uh, so she's better qualified and also has done oil and gas as her master's as well. Um, also, um, Kofi, <coughs> Ofosu says that Sami Jemfi thinks he's making sense. Uh, how many of Mohammed's family members were politically active for you to compare him to President Kofuadu in terms of number of family members in government? The likes of Kenoforiata, Atachia, and co, they listed, have been involved in MPP politics for years. That how how uh, does their rel rel relative being president, the president, prevent them from occupying public office um okay all right all right all right okay so uh, okay i've got to move on <laughs> so let's now look at the issue of the trial of the police top police officer acp uh, gozo and as you know we understand he's been charged <coughs> with treason felony 
or is it uh, treason? Treason felony? I think abetment or so. Um, <laughs> all right. Abetment, yeah. Let's listen to Benjamin, Dr. Benjamin Abgozo himself. Um, he had a few things to say. And then um, Martin Pebu, one of his lawyers, also had a couple of things to say about his arrest and treatment so far. Uh, but the point is that he didn't get the bail that he sought and we don't know when next he's likely to get bail. These charges are frivolous. Mm -hmm. I'm as strong as anything. I'm not going to be bogged down. You are behind you. We are behind you. Your Nobody family is behind you. you. Your Nobody behind you. can gag me. I have not committed any crime. I've done nothing wrong. I mean, we are, the president called upon us to be citizens. Okay. So when I express my opinion on a WhatsApp platform unrelated to any alleged coup, nobody should bog me down. And I'll stand for this. I'll stand for this till the end. It's okay. It's okay. They cannot break me down at all. It's okay. And I'm it's as okay. strong as anything. It's okay. It's Thank okay. you very much for your support. Thank you, Thank you very much. It turned out that the DNI are unwilling to grant him bail. And then also, they are saying that uh, they would rather arraign him before the Kanishi District Court tomorrow morning, so we can go and apply for bail in that court. But you see, the snag is this. We know that the District Court ordinarily has no jurisdiction to try such a matter. So it means that, properly speaking, we can't get bail in that court. So it means that we'll take steps eventually to go to the High Court for bail. We know that for the nine others who are standing trial, the offense is treason felony. Is that the same offense that your client is being investigated in relation to, in terms of the documents that you have seen? No. What I saw yesterday was a case of high treason. I didn't see treason felony. So I'm really surprised. Uh, so, well, it's up to the prosecution to have different charges. The family has been here since 6.30 a.m. Let me repeat, with all the energy I can master, the family has been here since 6.30 a.m. and they were flatly denied access. Myself as lawyer, I came around 11 a.m. and I was also denied access until after 3 p.m. This is very deplorable. This is a bloat on our democracy. That a man is uh, arrested and he won't be allowed to have access to his family. For crying out loud, why, is he a dangerous person? Is he a danger to his own family? I mean, what is this? This is a man who was just interrogated for his comments on WhatsApp. Let me repeat. He was interrogated yesterday for only his comments on WhatsApp. They have not said they found a pin. They've not said they found a needle. They've not said they found scissors. They've not said they found a cutlass in preparation for any coup d'etat. No, absolutely nothing. All right, so uh, Martin Pebu there. And uh, so let's um, begin with um, James. What do you make of the developing situation about the coup plotters, you know, allegation? And we, we are told of several other people who were being, you know, roped in. And now we understand that some of them just went to the BNI had a little chat and it was discovered that their involvement was was actually of no moment so they were allowed to go um Agozo is charged with abetment um to commit crime namely treason felony treason felony and the particulars of his uh, offense are that during the month of november 2018 he did abet Frederick Yao Makpam, and you know Yao Makpam is supposed to be the leader of this particular movement, and eight others to commit the crime, namely treason uh, felony. I just want, for our purposes, put a bit of, you know, a picture to the facts. They say that the accused person is a senior police officer stationed at the police headquarters Accra sometime in November 2018, they accused whilst in the UN mission in Entebbe, is that how it's pronounced? I always have a problem with Entebbe, 
was invited by Frederick Yao Macpalm, uh, presently in custody, the founder of, the N of an NGO called Take Action Ghana, TAG, to join the group. The accused person agreed to join the group and was subsequently added to the TAG platform. Prior to the accused person's invitation into um, the group or TAG platform, Yao Macpalm and others in custody had discussed their intention to demonstrate against the government, leading to the taking over of government. Subsequently, the accused was informed of the intended demonstration, which he agreed to take part, though he was in the mission area. The accused joined the discussions on the TAC platform to organize a demonstration against the government and taking over of the government. That several meetings held between the accused and others currently in custody to facilitate the execution of the demonstration against the government and taking over of government. Further, the accused, whilst on vacation to Ghana, held several meetings with the leadership of the group currently in custody and incited them to demonstration against the government and to take over the government as a right. That in his quest to show his commitment, the accused person assisted the unlawful enterprise with various sums of money to facilitate the organization of the unlawful demonstration and the taking over. Again, the accused drafted a speech to be delivered on that fateful day of the demonstration, um, among other accusations that they raised against him. So, yes. Yes, uh, Thompson. Mm. So the facts you have just read, mm. it has so many gaps. Hmm. And I am wondering how these facts can be proven mm. when the matter is properly brought before a court of competent jurisdiction for trial. <laughs> Dr. Agozo, as we all know him, very outspoken, very admirable, a seasoned officer. I have had a very close working relationship with him in the past when I worked at the Ministry of the Interior. Very fine officer. In fact, he was very instrumental together with um, um, Superintendent Raymond in the establishment of the counterterrorism unit of the Ghana Police Service. So I, I hold him in high esteem. But Samson, let me limit myself to uh, the facts and the treatment that has been meted out to um, Dr. Goso uh, following his arrest. I think that, look, as a country, and let us all join hands in our condemnation of the modus operandi of the BNI. It has been their style, their way of doing things for a very long time. Anybody uh, could become victim. Yeah. We've all been victims yeah. before. As, as, as yeah. counsel, I had occasion to fight them when a very senior police officer had been implicated and sent there. I sat in a waiting room for well over four hours Jeez. before I eventually got the opportunity to see my client. And even when I had the opportunity, somebody was seated and looking right <coughs> into my face whilst I was interacting with my client. Huh? I mean, these practices, their modus operandi is unacceptable. And as a country, we must point these things out. Look, so Dr. Goso is arrested. You're not even lucky they allowed you. Sometimes they flatly deny lawyers. Mm -hmm. And, and I have talked about the situation where myself and Kiseja being at Bet Fable, we had to make a complaint, thought, go to the attorney general wanting to make a complaint about how the BNI, yeah. headed at the time by a lawyer, and lawyers are coming to clients and you won't give them mm -hmm. access. Meanwhile, they will deal with the clients and make them promises and then get them to say things that they don't intend mm -hmm. to say. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, so listening to Dr. Gozo himself, mm. his counsel, Martin Pebu, and Martin has indicated clearly that um, Dr. Gozo was interrogated for seven hours, and that in the course of the interrogations, the investigators showed WhatsApp messages to Dr. Gozo, mm. and, and, and seriously, the WhatsApp messages, I don't know how they came by these facts. If what I've heard from Martin Pebu, and I have no cause to doubt the integrity of Martin Pebu, is anything to go by 
I think that this is just one of the instances where the state... You choose to believe Martin, but you won't believe the state officers. <laughs> That's what you're saying? No, 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 no. Martin said he sat through the interrogations. Okay. Mm -hmm. And all the evidence they have against Dr. Gozo are WhatsApp messages. Uh -huh. so what's, and in what's, those WhatsApp what's, messages, for instance, yeah. uh, according to Martin, they showed to him a message he had sent, mm. which was to the effect that conditions in Ghana currently <coughs> arrive for an Arab Spring. Mm. That's all. And so that is one of the reasons why they are holding him. Conditions in Ghana arrive for an Arab Spring. Beyond but that, many a beyond security that, analysts he said to have drafted a speech for the demonstration that they intended to do, which demonstration was supposed to culminate in taking over the government, and he also gave money to support. Once again, the according to Defence Counsel Martin mm. Pebo, what they mm. showed to him in the course of the interrogations was a guideline sent by Dr. Gozu mm. to the members of Tactic Action Ghana on how to prepare a petition, a petition to be read at the demonstration. Mm. That's all. It was not a speech to be read following the overthrow of government. So that correction needs to be made. That's why I asked the question where they got the facts from. Mm. Now, on the issue of uh, uh, um, advising on how a demonstration can be carried out. All Dr. Gozo did was to um, advise that, look, they couldn't hold <coughs> a demonstration without sending appropriate notice to the police right. in accordance with the Public Order Act. Mm. That's all. And yet the interrogations took seven solid hours. So that's all they hold against Dr. Gozo, unless, of course, they have further evidence, which is yet to be brought to the attention of Dr. Gozo. And so he was brought before court. Uh, they, so far, they've been to court on two different occasions. Uh, so it has to be said, he's not been charged yet. So therefore, he's not an accused. He's a suspect. He's been charged. He's not been charged. He's been charged. He, and so you read, you read the facts. Has he, has these he, facts, these has, facts. Has he been uh, made to plead to his plea? No, no, no. No. Yesterday. Mm. But really? something. But 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 oh, I thought I thought they they I thought they went there only for the purposes of securing his continued remand. No, well, but 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 something without a charge. How do you even do that? It is mm. irregular. Of course, yes. Yes. So you no, you you, you but, read but, from but the you charge. See, you can sheet. do that. Sometimes they do that. They take your clients to the to the court only for the purposes of bail. So their plea w is not even taken. But something that is even an abuse. It is something we need, need to no, look no, at yesterday, critically as lawyers. Yesterday, mm. yesterday. Look, mm -hmm. it's a clear case of abuse. Mm -hmm. So uh, Martin Pebu has raised the issue of the true intendment, the, 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 the interpretation that should be, should be placed on Article 14.3. Mm. And you know under Article 14.3, uh, mm. what the Constitution envisages is that when somebody is arrested or detained, the person must be brought on suspicion mm. of having committed a crime. Mm. The person must be brought before a court within 48 hours. Mm. And so yesterday, when the magistrate ruled her interpretation, she sought to interpret that provision of the Constitution, which is wrong. I mean, of, of course, if she thinks that the provision was clear enough and that she was merely applying it, that is another matter. But I think that provision calls for interpretation. So brought before a court within 20, 20, 48 hours, does it mean that when mm. the charge okay, in so question... Okay, jo so Joy, Joy News had Akable in the courtroom and his plea was not taken. His plea was not taken. Yeah, so at this point, let's continue to treat him as a suspect. Mm -hmm. No, but he's an accused mm. person. Okay. Mm. Once so there is a charge right. sheet, Mm. which stands against him. He's an accused person. All right, all right. So let's go. Yes. Mm. So my point is, what is the interpretation we should place on Article 14 theory? Because the charge that has been preferred is an indictable uh, uh, offense. Mm. Treason, felony, and its abetment is indictable. So yes, admittedly, the district court will have something to do by way of committal proceedings. But when the state 
takes Dr. Gozo to the court at a time when the committal proceedings have not commenced. Is it a court within the meaning of Article 14, within that context? I say no. And that was the argument of Martin Pebo. So send well, the, the man the, to a the, court of competent jurisdiction. The, 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 the magistrate disagreed with you. They were looking for a man. Yes, yeah, yeah, so, but that is wrong. Mm. So you don't send him to a court mm. which then exercises jurisdiction to remand. Mm -hmm. And when you move a bail application, the same court will turn around and say, I don't have the jurisdiction to entertain the bail application. Go to the Human Rights Court. Go to the High Court. That, for me, is an abuse. That needs to be corrected. So, so on what basis did the magistrate court mm. entertain the matter, exercise jurisdiction by remanding him? That is an exercise of jurisdiction. And yet when counsel moves a bail application, the same court would say, no, 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 I lack jurisdiction in the matter. Mm. Do, do you agree with those who say this is far-fetched? He just contributed in WhatsApp conversations. He was far away outside of the country. And, and so what's, what's the point about saying he's abetting treason felony? It's far-fetched, Samson. Really? I mean, going through the facts and listening to what transpired uh, in the course of the interrogations. That's why I said, unless, of course, they have further evidence and would subsequently interrogate do they Dr. Need, Agosso. Do, do they need more than his participation on that WhatsApp platform. Do they need they more need than more that? They need more than that. Why, why do they, they must need demonstrate more? that he actually took steps. And so, look, <coughs> I'm sure in their bid to establish that he took steps to um, further the alleged agenda of the coup conspirators, all right, suspected coup conspirators, he contributed a sum of 2,000. But what they showed to him, which was extracted from the WhatsApp uh, platform simply shows that that contribution was meant for a medical screening exercise at Agogoloshi. Remember that the uh, 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 kingpin or the suspect. Treason felony simply means you are preparing or you are endeavoring to, you know, take unlawful means to alter the policies and programs of the government. Yes. That's where to start from. Yes. And if you are looking for somebody who is abetting that, yeah. WhatsApp messages you should have established money. that he facilitated, etc. But there is nothing to mm. show mm. on those WhatsApp uh, messages that Dr. Gozu knew that the group in question was preparing to uh, stage a coup. That evidence is yet, uh, Dr. Gozu is yet to be confronted with any such evidence. Okay. But some say, let me move away from. Um, uh, the issues that have so far transpired in court. And so I think that there is need for uh, us to look at the they meaning have, they have to people, be ascribed to They have court. people in custody. There are people in custody who they say these people, they have put the substantive charge against them, that what they were doing amounted to seeking to alter the policies or and programs of government and that is the meaning of you know treason felony and also usurping the executive powers yes so they say they have evidence of them you know manufacturing things and doing all of these preparations and everything else even uh, in the case of um, those people who have been accused of the commission of the substantive charge mm. they have denied all of them have denied. Okay. Uh, but I am uh, speaking in specific reference to Dr. Gozo. Mm. We can go into uh, the facts uh, uh, relative to those who have been charged with the substantive <coughs> offense of treason felony. But in the specific case of Dr. Gozo, he was confronted with some evidence in the okay. course of his interrogation. Okay. Yeah, so, so mm. that is the angle from which I am proceeding. But some, some say, let me move away from that and talk about how Dr. Gozo has so far been treated as a senior officer of the Ghana Police Service, which I think leaves much to be desired. Okay. Look, this is a very senior officer. We suspect him of the commission of a crime. There are standard procedures 
some of which cannot be found in the police service regulations. But over the period, some conventions have been built and followed such as religiously by the police service. Such as. So when a very senior police officer is implicated in the commission of a crime, the practice has been that if there is need for him to be kept or detained, normally what happens is that he is handed over to the Inspector General of Police. Like was done to Patrick Timbila. Absolutely. Put, put under Absolutely. Arrest. He's handed over to the Inspector General of Police. Does it not matter? And, does and, it not and, matter? And, does and, it not matter and, the suspected crime involved in, in Patrick Timbila's own? It was not a matter of something that if you are found guilty, <laughs> you are looking at uh, suffering yeah, death or going to prison for life. Something it doesn't matter. Mm. It doesn't matter. Even in the armed forces, and we have <coughs> the history of coups in this country where officers were implicated, they have standard procedures in dealing with them. So you don't arrest them and detain them in BNI custody in the manner that Dr. Gozo was detained. So I'm Are saying you talking on authority, about preferential treatment. It's not preferential that treatment. Not I am treated mindful. Like any other I am mindful. Or any other person I, who is suspected of abetting seizing for the government. I am mindful of the fact. The I am mindful of the fact that mm. nobody is above the law. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you must remember that for <laughs> senior officers in the uniform services, it must be a privilege to enjoy. The, 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 absolutely, there are there are there are regulations that regulates okay. the, uh, the way and manner they He's, should be treated. He said, he said to have, for example, breached, most likely breached the regulation, somewhere regulation 20 or something of the police service regulations. Uh, Kuku has a copy around here. That which, is an, which, which, has which, re which, which requires that yes. as a serving police yes. officer, yes. you don't get yourself in activities or things that will provoke political that provoke political controversy. Would you say, from knowing just the bare facts, as we all know, that he put himself in a situation that provokes political controversy, mm. and therefore he's even subject at the level of the police to discipline? Well, um, right from the onset, I was strongly of the view that the police themselves ought to have invoked their internal disciplinary mechanism. Right. Establish some prima facie case against him. And following his interdiction, he could then be um, subject to the criminal laws of the land. But having not done that and put him before court, it created an awkward um, uh, uh, situation. Mm. And so, and that is why is that the man had no choice. Is that process mm. the same for criminal conduct? Hmm. Absolutely. If you a have senior to. policeman if commits you murder. No, no, no. If you commit murder, there are definitely regulations in the police service, uh, for instance, CIA 76, which, is about which, which regulates the, the conduct of police officers. When a police Who officer commits, commits murder, first of all, that would amount to misconduct. Prima facie. And that so so if, if you are not interdicted as a police officer, I'm saying that you put yourself <laughs> in an awkward position. Okay. To keep right. it, but, so, but, but something, I, no, I, I, I on, want to here. make a very hold important hold on here, hold on here. Uh, uh, submission here um, before. Please. Do yes. that in one minute. Yes. One minute. So, mm. my point is that the man is put before court, a junior officer is assigned the responsibility to prosecute. That is a dangerous development that can undermine the command and control of the police service. A junior officer, an assistant superintendent of police, this doesn't happen anywhere. In any case, this is an indictable offense. Why did the Attorney General not take up mm. the responsibility of prosecuting the matter right from the onset? But now what they have done is to expose the ASP to serious challenges. He's an ASP. Now you go and stand there. Yes, it is his work. <coughs> He's assigned the responsibility of prosecuting. But what happens if Dr. Gozo is acquitted? He goes back to assume his command position. Tomorrow, that ASP is taken to or uh, posted to uh, uh, serve under, under the command of Do Dr. Gozo. What happens? Mm -hmm. So apart from the fact that Dr. Gozo should have been handed over to the IGP, 
And so that any time his wanted IGP would produce him, okay. the fact that he's being prosecuted <laughs> by an All ASP right. but, but, is but, unacceptable. But, but I understand you to say that from the facts that we have gotten to know so far, on the presumption that those facts are the facts of the involvement in the WhatsApp group and whatever it is, that he put himself in a situation where he would be subject to police discipline, at least. Maybe. So he would okay. have to face a service right. inquiry. Okay. He would have to face the fact mm -hmm. that he's been interdicted doesn't right. mean he's even culpable. Okay. In the sense of the police service regulations. Right. They would have to appoint an adjudicator mm. and allow mm. him to appear before the adjudicator. Right. He has the right to be defended okay. by counsel. Right. Okay. And for his culpability <laughs> to be established. Mm. Okay, thank you. So um, is it the charge sheet that Coco has opened? No, no, no. Okay. No. All right. So <laughs> what, do you, what do you make of the discussion so far about this, uh, you know, thickening of events as to who else is going to pick, is, is, is likely to be picked up? We're told about some other top police officers who were supposed to be picked up, and we got to be explained to that somebody was just invited to explain something. He went away, no arrest, nothing like that. Um, you knew more than many people kn knew about this sort of, uh, this allegation of the plot, coup plot. See, um, preliminary comments here, there. See, the modus operandi of BNI, which has become a subject for critique here, mm. I associate myself with that, mm. has been such a subculture for a very long time across the political history of our country. And it's something that must stop to be honest with you. It's not good for human rights uh, culture that we are trying to build. And we all have to speak with one voice against that. Uh, my brother was in government when some of those things happened. Mm. Uh, I didn't hear him talk. Mm. Maybe he spoke privately. <laughs> yes. You know, <laughs> I'm sure you know what happened. It's, it's a good shot. He <laughs> yes. was, was in a position to do then something also, about it. Then also, and here it, because... It still happens. They, yeah. they, they pick people... Wrong. And they keep them beyond 48 yeah. hours. Yes. If, if you are not lucky, you don't have a lawyer who would go and, yes. even you know, the lawyer don't look, give you even when the court, you. Even when the court they'll grants keep, they'll bail. They'll abuse your rights. Even when the court gives bail, grants bail, and says, send them to the registry mm. for them to process. They send them they back to BNI. Mm. Yeah. You remember? Yeah. Yeah. The three SE mm. people. Yes. So it's, it's a bad culture. We should speak against it. And I'm prepared to join all hands to do that. Right. Then also, of course, the preliminary judicial processes, and because I'm not a legal mind, I really am unable mm. to understand it. This thing about indictable and they, they take you to district court, all that. But it's also been going on for a long time. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, as we speak, I know there isn't what we call a docket in the real sense of the word that has been presented to the Attorney General. It appears the thing is at a stage where it is not the attorney general that yeah. is handling. You recall, even if you go back to the mm. Kennedy Japan case, all those things we are talking about occurred. That's like normal standard. When they are investigating and they are not done, they don't take it there. Fantastic. But point. because the law says they cannot hold you beyond 48 Fantastic hours, point. they must quickly take you to court, get a remand, or get you. Bail. Yes. So mm. I wanted us to get a contest. Mm. It, though it's irritating and counsel for suspects and accused persons who feel very uncomfortable with that process. Mm -hmm. But you can fine-tune it, maybe. You, the lawyers, can come up with better ideas. You know, so that is also there. And it's all bottom-lines because the investigation is still ongoing. You see, uh, this gentleman, this police, is it Dr. Agoso? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I find him as a very interesting police officer. I think th that he came to my notice based on the IDEC thing that uh, Metro especially, Metro TV kept on playing back. And his articulation, his uh, mode of communication, everything were fantastic. I loved it. Mm. I admired him for that. Not that what he was saying was novel. After all, the Constitutional Review Commission had raised those issues. Uh, government white paper had rejected some of them. But for his boldness at a such a forum, mm. and I'm sure the police hierarchy permitted him to attend that. They loved it. They loved yes, it. Mm -hmm. It was good. <laughs> you know? and that's when he won my admiration mm. and i said so last thursday after thursday my attention was brought to some other incidents involving him and i think i hesitate to narrate them because it might sound prejudicial but apparently he's had some problems 
within the police before. Yeah. And indeed, somewhere 2007 yeah. was removed. Yes. And uh, yes. he appealed to the police council, and the uh, police council reversed the decision, okay. but was, reduced was his, him in rank. So he's somebody who apparently uh, speaks his mind and tries to take the initiative and has difficulties, even yeah. within the police service. You know, I tell you, I think his decision to join the WhatsApp group was indiscreet. Mm -hmm. Completely indiscreet. With the benefit of hindsight, I'm sure he would admit this. If you do a content analysis of things that were being said there, I don't know at which point in time he was drafted. Mm. Because when, if you were drafted at a certain stage, you wouldn't know what had happened earlier. But whilst he was drafted, some of the discussions, he ought to have been cautious. You don't know everybody on that platform, though it's a close one, and it's a close one mm. too. So as a senior police officer, I know he was on another platform uh, titled Alert with Adam Bonner, right. where, yes, he was on that platform mm. too, where you'd be surprised, even some ministers of states or members of parliament are on. I'm not too sure he took his time to check the membership mm. of that platform. Okay, I'm on so many platforms, I don't know who put me there. Mm. Hundreds. May I delete them immediately? They well, they, some of them who want to deal with you, when you delete, they bring you back. <laughs> <laughs> because they want you to read what they are saying. Because I think, I think it's even wrong. You just set up a group and you put me there. Yes, what is I'm, that? So I I, I'm, I'm a sleeper yeah. on most of them. Uh, I, don't, I don't talk, okay. I don't act, I don't do anything. Yeah. It gives me a way of knowing what people are seeing, how okay. they are seeing. But they should be careful because, yeah. see, you have put me there. How do you know what I'm going to do with it? Uh, and so it is a dangerous thing. I think he's, it was indiscreet that he joined. I will not read what he placed on, for instance, the alert with Adam Bonner because it would be prejudicial. But if you read it, and I'll let you read it off mm. thing, no senior police officer should get involved in that should even see that on a platform. You don't know who is there and who is not there. Of course, that is distinct from the tag group. So that's why I say if I read that one, but you But if you're familiar with him, he speaks his mind. Yes, but look. I've dealt with him on many occasions. Something. He speaks his mind, and he wants the police service to be a service that is independent and truly independent. In principle, I'm with him. He is even ready to ensure that the Supreme Court pronounces on some of these things in principle, that inhibit the police from yes, effect, I mean, in uh, principle, working well. That's what we are doing. We are mm. seeking to fine-tune this constitution. There are people who say 25 years after this, we've seen so many loopholes. Mm. The Constitutional Review Commission itself was part of that agenda. Mm -hmm. Okay, And we are not happy that some aspects are not being implemented. So in context, he's not wrong. But it depends on who you are, what you are. And joining a particular WhatsApp group you must exercise a certain level of discretion, which I think was missing, and hence these difficulties. But of course, we are not a court. None of us here is a judge. Oh, sure. Yes, and so fortunately, he's going to have his day in court. Mm. Look, the linkage, uh, because he joined the TAC and contributed in terms of discussions and that resource, and I'm not sure the three hour and i saw only three hours and listened to only three hours there was no hint of him there okay mm. there was no hint of this gentleman on there but apparently it's a 15 months old audiovisual mm. build up so maybe he was somewhere else i didn't see but the truth is this the investigations are ongoing those who are in custody are talking mm. okay mm. new angles are emerging right based on what is already there so his link to the whatsapp group what he might be might have said there could be linked but that's somebody doing investigations linking mm. the court may not necessarily accept that linkage right am i right you're mm. right and once yeah. some of them have been arrested. Often, B and I will move in quickly, take their gadget, take exactly. their phones, which they've done, and they will go to the court. They will get an order, and they will begin to. They've done. So know, more elements, them. new angles are emerging. Mm. I would only plead uh, that the gentleman 
this fine police officer can do without partisan propaganda, you know, treatment of the issue. He can do without it. You think he's doing so? Not him. Okay. That he, people should not seek to do that yes, for him. Yes, because it's already happened. You have heard him that he thinks he's being, you know, that hunted. He's talking. For, I haven't said for some of his, his public pronouncement you know, that no, people don't like. IDEC matter had mm. nothing to do with this matter. Okay. All right. The IDEC so, phone had yeah. absolutely okay, nothing so, to do Gary, with it. Gary, now I come to you and, mm. and <coughs> we, we've all tried to bring in the BNI here to suggest one thing or the other that they don't seem to do right and they do wrong all the time. Um, our law again says that a person who has been taken into custody without a warrant in connection with any offense shall be released from custody not later than 48 hours after his arrest unless he is earlier brought before a court of competent jurisdiction. Once you pick the person up and you are processing them and you don't you, are, you claim you haven't finished, and it's 48 hours, and you still haven't taken <coughs> them to court. Yeah. The law says you release them. That is correct. Why is this not being done? And we see the police, the well, BNI, <coughs> breaching people's rights all the well, time. Well, something. Uh, I think that basically uh, what is happening that we are seeing, you know, when they are investigating, mm -hmm. and uh, it's not yet complete, mm -hmm. it's difficult to release the person. So take them to court that, that is before the, the 48, uh, 48 hour. Well, if you won't grant them bail. Well, I, 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 I agree with you. But I think that would be more reason why probably they took him to the holding court or the district court. The nature of the offense. Obviously, they have to commit a proceedings. I mean, you cannot take him to high court at the court of first instance because the high court don't do commit proceedings there. It will be done, obviously, at the district court. And yesterday, I was in, I was in, in, in the court when the magistrate said, well, uh, she had the power to, 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 to remand. I heard her say that. You know? So I think the essence of why they went there was just to go there to have him remanded for them to continue with the investigation. What do you say to James who says, if you say you have power to remand, you should have power to grant bail? Exactly. You see? That is a matter that I think it should go to the Supreme Court for interpretation. Yes. You see, because, because, you see, because, you see, um, yes, people have made that point. And there are things that we have, we have been involved in that we went to district court and attempted, you know, to try and secure bail over there, uh, I think some years ago. And that uh, we knew very well that we, the, the, the court could not have granted bail. But I wanted to see whether there could be an error of law along the line. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so we, we tried to apply for bail. All right, in a rip, in a rip, in a rip case, you know, but uh, we couldn't get it. The bottom line is that the court cannot grant bail in these instances, rape and all these things, you know, felony offense and all these, you can't grant bail. But the judge said he had a part to remand, and that the court, in her view, cannot be mean the court, only a high court, because there are also rules within the, uh, you know, uh, what they operate at the district court, where they mm. do computer proceedings, mm. you know. Now, I think that this issue of BNI and BNI uh, holding people sometimes maybe without right to counsel mm -hmm. or access to counsel or relatives, it's a matter that has, is not only today that is going on. You know, yes, sometimes it depends on, on, on the political cap that you may wear. You may have access or you may not have access. Now, what is important, which I think uh, we should all take note, I think that my brother. Uh, 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 what is his name? Martin. Good. Martin was, uh, you know, getting very, very emotional with the matter, and I could sense the, the emotions. I could sense the emotions on his face, the emotions in the language, the mm. tone, and the way he was going about. But now sometimes you, you have been to BNI, and when you go there, sometimes, <sighs> even at some of the police stations, because you know the law and you know the people you are dealing with know the law and they are abusing it, sometimes you can't help yeah. but get emotional. It's very irritating. Well, I, 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 I agree with you. Mm. But I think the judge was very clear to me. He said, look, give him access. Put him in police custody at magistrate, uh, right. at what do you call it, uh, 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 Ministry. ministry's mm. police station, mm. grant him access to his people. But one thing I found very interesting, which I want to comment on, is the uniform that the gentleman took to court. And two, 
the, 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 the statement that he delivered immediately after, uh, you know. Was he taken to BNI in uniform? Yes. Yes. So why do you want him not to go yeah, but to he, court but, in the uniform? You know, yes, but, yeah, but he was given his, his, his ordinary clothes. And he insisted that he would go to court with the, with the because, police uniform. Because he had not been interdicted. Well, but now, no. now he's been interdicted. Well, yeah, yes, now with yeah. the now interdiction, 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 interdiction. it's wrong to wear the uniform. Yeah. Yes. Okay, you see, but, but before the, no, the interdiction. The timing of the interdiction was wrong. They, they didn't yeah. do it early. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but, but, but James, James, the gentleman was impressed upon to wear a mafti to court. And he said no. He went there from But you see, the juniors, duties. at that point in time, you hadn't interdicted him. Yes. The juniors were those dealing with him. Yes. They couldn't even challenge him. No. He went there from, he went, there, he went officer. to the BNI from work. Mm -hmm. So if he's going to court, he should have hopes that he could be granted bail and he will walk back to his office. But Sammy, have you ever seen a police officer who, who is who has been charged with a criminal offense appear in a dock in a uniform before? Have you? I haven't seen it before. But that is and, what and, happens. And, 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 and more importantly, and more importantly, because when they were coming, <laughs> and I was watching you on your screen, I thought that the person he was rather the person who was protecting, you know, the other officer who was in mufti. Then I said, they said, no, no, that is the abuzoma. So does that bring in James's question, which other people have raised? You needed a senior officer, somebody more senior than him, who could order him, who could, you know, give him directions that he would comply with. You have a junior who cannot instruct him. Well, 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 I, I, yeah. I tend to agree yeah. with that view, okay. by and large. Mm -hmm. But I think that, I think that going to call in that uniform really, mm -hmm. and so the UN, you and, you and, you know, Beret, yeah. it raises well, a lot of questions, mm -hmm. you know. Now, now, the, 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 the statements that he, he uttered after the court, not on this one, the last agenda. Mm. The one before this one, yes. It appeared in my view that they were, they were pregnant of political statements. Says he cannot be suppressed, you know. As a political witch hunt. And he thanks people for the support so, he's yes. been giving. What's wrong with and that? He can't be badged. But who is badging him? And, and who is yeah, suppressing him? Him. him? You don't know what he knows. Huh? You see, you see, you see, when you, when you bring in politics, and the same thing was being done by Martin, my very good friend, the same thing, you see, when we bring in politics, we are not careful. Yeah, then, politics. oh, but a day it. before, a day before they even went to the court, what was all about on your network saying that uh, it's political witch and that they are not going to appear at the district court and they will not go, they want to go to high court and all that? Gary, do you <laughs> remember the times that you were visiting, I think, Iyoko offices and your clients were not being given access? We gave you platform on radio and you spoke about <laughs> where you there felt that there was a political hand in these though. things. Uh, you see, you why are you now suddenly you see, feeling this is see, wrong to you, do? You, you see, no, 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 no. You, know, you see, I'm, mm. I'm simply saying that, mm. yes, you can speak. You can articulate your views on the matter, how wrongful or how rightful the whole thing is being. But my difficulty is that when you bring in the political aspect of it, to make it appear mm. that the whole, you know, investigation is, is, is a political witch hunt. If you are not careful, if you are not very careful, then it becomes... A political matter. That's my, my difficulty here. Okay. So so okay. you see. Let's bring in Bento. Yeah. So you see. So you okay. see. I think right. that. Yeah. I think that. Yeah. It is too early in the day. Okay. It's a matter of an investigation. Yeah. Let us not push in the political twist like Senior Kuku just said. Let's see the thing as an matter of investigation. If indeed there is evidence suggests that crime has been committed, the right procedure should be followed. He's been interdicted. Should the two processes of internal, you know, discipline process and the court go on at the same time? I think it should. It should. I think it should. I no, think okay. the police no, service... I don't get it. Right? He's, he's, the main focus is on the alleged the criminal. treason. Yeah. Okay, the what has he done relative to the police? In, the, for police? Say it again. What yeah, no, the questions no, no, that no. are being raised about uh, potential breaches of the police service regulations. Yeah, the CSM6. I think it's an overkill. Okay. Let, let mm. me have your coffee okay. in the meantime. Yes. Uh, Good. So, so, he, so he talks about the statements that you know, Dr. Agozo was, was making, mm -hmm. and I think that even prompted the judge. Mm -hmm. And we are told yesterday that the judge cautioned that, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, you know... He, he just advised. He advised. It was just an advice. Okay. Yeah, okay. The way the media projected it, I yeah. was going to ask the question, does the judge have a right to... No, it was a me, it was me, me advice. Okay. Okay. Only advice. Okay. So the judge, I was, I was, was in court. It was orbiter mm -hmm. for the so judge. Yeah. Okay. And Gary here is also inviting us to, 
you know, interrogate this thing he himself has erected. Okay. <laughs> there are many things, there are, there are many issues with this particular matter, mm. and with time I'll go into them, but what's important to me is after now what? Mm. You know, in the developing, development of a nation, if you're building a nation, things come up, we show you where little problems are. This BNI issue we've all spoken about, okay, it's gone party after party, government after government, you know, and it's, yeah. it's really bad, and we should make a point, put a pin in it, and demand that it be dealt with. Some of the officers themselves there become victims of that whole monster. Mm. Okay? Mm. And I, I, was, I was representing somebody in BNI, and when we went there, you know the intimidation, I don't have time to describe it, you've all been there, they make you wait. I sent a message to them and told them, after a certain time, I'm leaving, because my client had just been invited anyway. <coughs> and then when we got into the room, very intimidating, all that they do, and then the point is, they said, this place is the BNI, and we must understand that there are different rules here. Mm. To which I told them, you cannot pretend that you are not subject to the constitution of this country. And I insisted. It was difficult. And look, you are one man. That day I knew they could have locked me up. Mm. But the point I'm making is that, out of all of this, let's keep talking about this. Let's keep pushing people who are in power. When you come into office, James, do something about it. You, you are now mere power. Do something about it. It could be anybody tomorrow. So that's one point. Number two, there is this issue about uh, the police conduct or misconduct. Now, I don't blame the police per se, but in the process of, again, nation building, we identify things that we fix. Martin was one of the guys who went to court to deal with the issue of criminal prosecution and the police giving you information. And then the problem with bail, you were talking about it. I'm anybody could just accuse you and you'll be locked up yeah. and then there was no bail. It's been dealt with. Now, what happens in the Public Order Act, which I have also had to deal with a number of times, they will pass your back and go and you know, get you know, a court to injunction. Yeah, injunction. We solve that problem. Now, what happens is that the police look across the law and they take advantage of the laws they can take advantage of. And this is a new one that we have now you know, realized we should deal with it. The concept of competent jurisdiction suggests that courts may have jurisdiction but not competence. Correct. It also suggests that a court may have competence but not jurisdiction. You may be a very good person when it comes to land law, okay? So you have competence in land law, but they will put you in commercial court. You have competence but not jurisdiction. It suggests to me that when the two go together, competent jurisdiction, then you must have that in that situation <coughs> because if you, equity demands balance. Mm. If a court can convict you, the same court must be able to acquit you. So a court that can remand you must be a court that can give you bail. So that clearly is a lacuna, it's a loophole in our law. We should deal with it. Again, the police take advantage of it. So I'm not blaming them. We, and those of you in power, make sure we solve these problems mm. because justice cuts always. Now come to the specific Well, issue. you can trust Martin Pebu. He's good at these things. Yes, uh, yeah. so and it's nation mm. building. Mm. It's very useful. So for me... He might go to the Supreme Court and get another judgment that benefits that's everyone. That's very, very <coughs> good. He should do it. And it's, it's yeah. very necessary. He should do it before mm. supporting him. So that's on competent jurisdiction. On the issue of Mr. Gozo, I admire him to have been in different places. We've talked, you know, the charges are serious. Let's not forget about that. Okay, and we've all been educated about the fact that it doesn't take too much to do coups in this country. And when this matter started, we were all laughing at the kind of evidence that was being put out, and there was room for that. Okay, and to that extent, therefore, we'll say again, the collection of evidence, the processing of evidence, the management of evidence, yes. Mm. But a wise man I respect very much called me at a point and told me that, look, there is more to this. I was even arranging for me to see some of the evidence okay now i didn't see all of that but i believe that person and i believe that there is more to this otherwise you would not hear what you are hearing mm. all that being said however <clears throat> let's put it on record mm. the process they've used so far has not been the best <coughs> the treatment of agojo is bad it's simply bad a senior police officer look you know what when you have a real case against somebody don't mess around the issue and you. punish him unnecessarily deal with the matter Today, they clearly seem to be punishing him. To what end? To what purpose? You're actually raising sympathy for him, and now you're giving him a platform, whether for good or for bad, to make statements which are pseudo-political. Mm -hmm. So clearly, we need to appreciate the fact that if this cool thing is real, 
Let the man have his day in court. Mm. Give him every facility to defend himself. And do not abuse, misuse, and conduct yourself improperly to create all kinds of situations around a central issue. So for me, I think whoever is in charge of this matter should create what wrong, what evil, what problem will be caused if Agbojo is freed to stay in his house, handed over to the IGP, have the benefit of his counsel, prepare his defense, and then you should take your time, prepare your accusation or whatever, bring it to court, yeah. and let's all hear it. Okay. So this sideshow is totally <coughs> unnecessary. <coughs> Let him have his day in court. This is sideshow. Yeah, it's a sideshow. <laughs> Incarceration and bail and what is a sanction? Yes, yeah, I just wanted this is to a very clarify serious, something. Very serious charges that are being put on him, mm -hmm. <laughs> which can get you to either sentence to death or yes. life imprisonment. So why are all these issues about bail and a court without jurisdiction yeah. and uh, no, but, keeping but, him no, but, 48 hours beyond and the, all these no, side issues? Where, 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 should yeah. they, where should they present him in the at the court of first instance? Where? A competent court. Is it where? Is it a high court? A high court. A high court. Because equity demands balance. A high court. Then the competent court. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No, in this matter, by the law, I think this is where you have uh, is it three high court judges yes. Yes. Three. Yes. who yes. have to deal with it. Yes. Right. So yeah. there must be a committal that the, will come yes, to the right. high court judges. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, so that's not the first place. But to the go. bailing issue, mm -hmm. the court they take him to, they have options. They chose a court that cannot give him bail. They chose it. They could have taken him to a court yes. okay. with a proper right. 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 no, 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 that, that, that is why his lawyers, his lawyers <coughs> ought to file the bail application at a high court. No. They will do so. Uh, yes, definitely. No. But no. 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 Gary talks about the fact that the magistrate court is the court that will do the committal proceedings. And so in that sense, that court has some jurisdiction. True, but on the two occasions that Agozo was taken to the magistrate court, they were not doing committal proceedings. Uh -huh. So we need to draw the line. Yeah. They were not doing committal proceedings. They are looking for remand. So why take him there? Yeah, I agree with you. Only for the judge to say, yes, I can remand, but I can't grant bail. Mm. Which is a problem. That is unacceptable. No, I agree okay. with you. But the bottom mm. line is that it is clear. It is, they, that you see, the docket is not even complete. Yeah. So they, they took him there just to remand him. Why mm. can't you let Why? the man be handed over to the okay. IGP? <laughs> All right, so <laughs> let's... Um, but what, what can we say, and not suggesting that, you know, he's been found to have been guilty of anything. What do you say about this culture now? Almost all the time, people, somebody is adding you to a WhatsApp page, <laughs> and we are on, yeah. sometimes yeah. we are happy about it. I mean, this should... Is it something mm. there is a switch mm -hmm. when you are added, take yourself out mm -hmm. and they put because, you back. Uh, they put no, you no, hold on, see, they put you back. <laughs> see, see, when they put you back, uh -huh. you can send a message to you the can person who put you back and say, Don't include me in this, or you or can block it. Block it. There is every facility for you to preserve your privacy, but sometimes to do what people are doing, be there quietly. You never know when somebody will sort here. You mm. get be a go. sleeping member, That's all. Mm. Yeah. Sleeping I agree. Member. Sleeping Most of the time, you are a sleeping member. But when you have a sleeping member, there's yes, a problem yes. now. There's misprision mm -hmm. of crime, right? Mm -hmm. That you know of something mm -hmm. that you didn't report mm -hmm. to the authorities. It can't be you proven could easily. Also be you, you, you could also be held you could. to be guilty. Mm -hmm. But it can't be proven easily. Is it, is yeah, it, yeah, it can't like be proven said, that you were reading proof. all the messages in a long thread. Actually, okay. yeah. It can't be proven. You all see, right. And yeah, it's crime. You see, yeah, I think so. in this case, you should all be careful. Uh, with the WhatsApp that we, we belong to. Mm. Look, in Canada, there was uh, recently <laughs> somebody was incarcerated just for having a, a pornographic, uh, you know, uh, 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 <coughs> video, uh -huh. video on his WhatsApp page that he has not even opened. Mm. He went to prison. He didn't okay. have a good lawyer. Whilst, whilst, <laughs> he, were, whilst he was going to oh, the yeah. he didn't have a good lawyer. <laughs> he didn't have a good lawyer. I think, I think we should be very careful now. He didn't open it. You didn't go <laughs> Somebody it. sent you, it to him. You yes. can't block the WhatsApp group, but you can delete it. <laughs> of course. He didn't open it. Yeah, How does he know the content of it? But the information has to be beyond reasonable doubt. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have a good lawyer. You see, okay. you see, you see okay. I think we should be careful okay. now with, with the group that we belong to. Mm. Yeah. If you don't want to be there, it's better that we just delete yourself. Okay. Mm. Mm. Because right. else... I think it's safer to do so. Mm. Yes, because if you are even there, Okay. And there's, a, there's a crime being committed. Right. Right. Subscribe. Right. Right. So, 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 so on that all. note, let me use this message to <laughs> take this break. We return to go to the GMPC briefly to find out whether they are using our, our oil money wisely.
Uh, this one, uh, Samuel Bryan, he says, this is a lesson. We all should be careful the kind of WhatsApp platforms we join and be mindful of our contributions on such platforms. It is right. Uh, is it right and ethical for a senior police officer to say it is the right time for Arab Spring to happen in Ghana? His lawyer has stated that there was a direct communication between the alleged coup plotters, TAG, and the ACP. He claims the BNI are relying only on two messages between the two parties as a basis for his detention. So why are people saying there is no correlation and it is just plot because he spoke at the IDEC meeting? And that um, is important. And on generally how we should treat our WhatsApp and when we get invited, uh, Kweku Enchibwe Siako says that Posting uh, messages on WhatsApp group platforms do have consequences. End-to-end -end encryption may not save you. So don't be fooled by the supposed anonymity and don't claim your freedom of speech is being abused when caught. It is simply a question of being... Is this simply a question of being criminalized for simply being a member of a WhatsApp group or one of the contents of what you post to the group members, or being aware of a potential crime being committed or about to be committed on the you, through the platform and failing to report same to the appropriate law enforcement agencies. Okay, so that was what I was referring to about misprision of uh, crime. What exactly is misprision of uh, treason? Mm -hmm. I'll be back, I'll check it. There's something also known as misprision yeah. of uh, treason. Yeah. We'll be right back. Okay.